It's my pleasure and honor to introduce um, Professor Jan Michel Corres, uh, which will present the prostate part of the elastography small part guidelines. So please, uh, yes. Jan Michel. Okay, so now it's time to start with the prostate, and it's a great pleasure to be here with you and share our enthusiasm, and uh, these are my conflict of interest. So first, uh, I would like to uh, uh, emphasize the role of EFSOM guidelines, and I would like you to pay attention to the two latest paper, the one from uh, Barr coming from the Wolfram, and the latest uh, uh, EFSOM guideline recommendation for the clinical practice of elastography. And really, it was a great pleasure to work with all the group. Um, you know that prostate cancer is still a, a major issue, and, uh, and we know that uh, uh, it will be uh, uh, difficult to uh, build a, a tool for a good diagnosis in, in the next future. We know that this is a second leading cause of cancer death in men, and unfortunately, most of uh, the techniques that we use for diagnosis, including PSA, or even transrectal ultrasound imaging has limited sensitivity and specificity. And that's why even in a normal transrectal ultrasound examination, we should not delay prostate biopsy in the case of abnormal digital rectal examination of PSA. Multiparametric MRI, of course, is playing a key role right now and uh, has become a major tool for the diagnosis of uh, prostate cancer. And now we're even moving to doing a, a systematic MR examination before biopsy. However, you see uh, the limitations of uh, MR. Um, prostate biopsy, even prostate biopsy, are showing some severe uh, limitations. And you see that the false negative rate is uh, around 20% and with a positive biopsy rate of only 30 to 60%. So clearly, we need some additional tools to diagnose prostate cancer. And it's interesting to know that prostate cancer is stiffer than normal prostate tissue. Now we have some ideas of the, these reasons, including stromal reactions, wound refer, uh, and uh, a reduction in us in our areas in, in prostate cancer stroma. So basically, we have now we are now convinced that uh, prostate cancer is a stiffer disease. However, to start with elastography in the prostate, you need some uh, uh, training and, uh, and the EFSUM guidelines stated that um, the operator should obtain adequate knowledge and training in ultrasound and elastographic method to perform this examination. And I think that this is really something that you should keep in mind. Basically, as from the previous papers, we see that there are two different techniques, two different approaches. Uh, uh, one is a strain elastography or quasi-static elastography, and the second one are the she wave elastography techniques. Basically, whatever the technique you're using, you should really pay attention to the quality or stability index to improve the reliability of your measurements. And recently, she wave elastography has been improved due to hardware uh, change and, and, and she wave amplification by moving the supersonic sources to reduce attenuation. So basically, this is a kind of a overall picture that we can have for uh, ultrasound elastography. And you see the two uh, prostate uh, scanning techniques here, strain elastography and the real-time she wave elastography technology. So for transrectal strain elastography, basically uh, the tissue strain mapping is obtained by analysis of tissue deformation. And right now you see that we're pushing on the prostate and, uh, and basically the machine will do some speckle comparison before and after compression. Basically remember that the stiff tissue will be strained, uh, uh, reduced strain with blue colors and the uh, soft tissue will ex exhibit higher strain with the red colors. And that is the contrary for she wave elastography. So it's important to keep this in mind and remember to uh, pay attention to the quality index and the position and size of the region of interest. Um, one of the limitations clearly of this technique 
is the slippage artifact. So basically, when you push in the prostate, you deform the prostate, and you lose you losing the imaging plane. And you also suppose that the deformation is uniform through all the gland in space and intensity. And that's a very strange uh, assessment, of course. So uh, basically, to finish for strain elasticity. Um, uh, we need to uh, 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 get the best reproducibility and have a longer learning curve. And these are recommendations coming from the Wolfram uh, paper. Uh, transrectal uh, she wave as elastography relies on no compression on the rectal wall. And I think this is a very key point. And this is a multi wave technique uh, where well, the she wave speed will be displayed as a map, a color map. Uh, covering the prostate. Uh, with a real-time she wave elastography, it's a dynamic quantitative map of soft tissue. And this is really helping for improving the reliability of the technology and, and, the, and the method. Of course, again, as I told you, the stiffer areas are coded in red and the softer, uh, softer tissues are colored in blue. And you can measure, have a, a true measurement of uh, the Q uh, of the elasticity, local elasticity by putting a region of interest is called a Q box, and you can get true measurements of the local elasticity uh, values, which is clearly a major advantage. Of course, it is generally accepted that the learning curve for she wave uh, elasticity will be reduced compared to strain elastography, but nevertheless, whatever the technique, uh, the operator should obtain sufficient training for both uh, transrectal ultrasound and, um, and transrectal elastography. Basically, the uh, technique starts with the uh, uh, B mode examination of the kidneys and the bladder, and a complete overview of uh, the prostate using transrectal uh, tissue harmonic imaging and color Doppler evaluation of the entire prostate and per periprostatic tissues. Strain, with a strain elastography, you just press the elastography button and you apply uh, smooth compression, compression cycles and train to maintain the probe on the, level, on the same level. And the suspicious area is a hypoechoic area with increased stiffness. And again, it's a blue coated area. For uh, she wave elastography, the technique of acquisition is totally different. And that's why I'm trying really to emphasize the point that you should not push on the transducer to deform the prostate. In this case, you just maintain the transducer at the uh, place of the most suspicious area, and then you uh, wait until stabilization of the signals. And this is really getting uh, faster and faster. And the uh, suspicious area appears like hypoechoic with increased stiffness coded in red, and that you can confirm with the true measurements uh, of uh, uh, the local stiffness. So uh, with the uh, uh, strain elastography, the normal pattern of the peripheral zone is homogeneous in coding with the green and red colors, with the transition zone appearing more heterogeneous due to BPH development. Um, you can observe in some cases the soft rim artifact that is uh, corresponding to the prostate capsule. With a, a, strain, with a she wave elastography, um, you don't press again on the prostate, you just observe uh, the color map and then you can all screen the uh, uh, entire uh, prostate or uh, analyze an abnormal area or nodule and the peripheral zone typically appears with a homogeneous encoding with the blue and green colors as you can see in this example in a younger man and with a BPH you see more heterogeneous pattern. Of course, microcalcification will appear as a stiffer areas. So again, why is this so interesting is that because of a very soft and homogeneous appearance, the peripheral zone will appear color coded with the homogeneous blue colors. Of course, you can you should use a, a, a appropriate scale, and the appropriate scale is around 70 kilopascal as a maximum. So stiffness value can be used to characterize adhesion, this is for sure. And the stiffness ratio to normal prostate tissue can also com be combined to improve the characterization of the lesion. The uh, mean stiffness value of the region of interest should be reported. And uh, of course, you should place adequately uh, the two uh, areas for 
uh, measuring the true stiffness. Again, this is a, a dynamic technique, and you see uh, the uh, detection of this abnormal prostate cancer and the interior uh, peripheral zone at the base. When we look at the performance of the technique, both techniques improve the detection of prostate cancers, and you see the values here coming from many papers and meta analysis. However, she wave, uh, uh, strain elastography, sorry, she, strain elastography should not be interpreted without considering conventional BMO findings. You see here a combination of papers uh, showing uh, the improvement that we can expect by uh, using strain elastography uh, in comparison to radical prostatectomy or in comparison to biopsy. And uh, basically in all studies, almost all studies, we see some strong improvement of the sensitivity and specificity of ultrasound uh, for uh, detection of prostate cancers. So um, the addition of a strain elastography can increase prostate cancer detection rate. And uh, I think this is a major point. The addition of a strain elastography increased positive biopsy rate compared to that of normal conventional transrectal ultrasound. And strain elastography is of limited value for the detection of small cancers. Of course, we cannot use just trained elastography to rule out cancer without biopsy, and biopsy still uh, remains recommended when the um, clinical case, depending on the clinical parameters. Well, she wave elastography, uh, of course, there are uh, less studies available, but uh, they are uh, concordant, and you see uh, results from our own uh, papers showing that the, with the increasing Gleason score, you see increasing uh, stiffness values, and you see the uh, good uh, differentiation between benign and malignant nodules using both stiffness values or stiffness ratio. With a, a, a threshold varying between 35 and 38 kilopascal or a ratio of 1.5, you see very high uh, values of sensitivity and specificity in, uh, in this case. Of course, uh, unfortunately, and depending on the technique of acquisition, you see that the threshold values can vary and uh, might also vary with the position of the patient uh, in, in lying on the decubitus or lateral decubitus. So basically, uh, uh, using uh, the she wave elastography uh, uh, technique, you can have uh, uh, up to a 6.4 fold uh, higher risk of a significant. Uh, uh, significant prostate cancer. So definitely the addition of she wave elastography can improve lesion localization for image guided prostate biopsy. And I think that's the key point of this lecture. However, she wave elastography should not be interpreted without considering conventional B mode as for strain elastography and the stiffness value above 35 kilopascal is suggestive of malignancy. There are no studies on the effect of lesion size on accuracy of she wave elastography, and that's a very interesting point. Uh, she wave elastography cannot be used as strain elastography as a decision tool to rule out prostate cancer without biopsy. And I think this is also a very strong message that I would like to give to you. Uh, there are some limitations for strain elastography, is the lack of uniform compression intra and intraoperator dependency and some sleep age artifact when the transducer is moved during the compression and decompression phases. Of course, diffuse cancers, like in this case, are very difficult to identify and training is needed. For a she wave elastography, we have uh, some of the same uh, limitations, uh, including pressure artifacts, uh, uh, but uh, 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 the techniques, the technology is being improved right now. The frame rate now is, is improving and is now between one and two image per second. And we have a limited size of the region of interest, but has to be large to cover the entire transverse plane uh, for um, uh, she wave elastography. Because I think this is very important. And I did not mention that point. Uh, the um, scanning of the prostate should be done in a transverse plane. And there are also, for both techniques, uh, intrinsic limitation because not all cancers are stiff and not all stiff lesions will be cancers. Calcifications, and that's why B mode is so critical, calcification can cause false positive results, and central gland uh, cancers are more difficult to detect. 
So uh, basically, in a conclusion, prostate ultrasound elastography is feasible and, and uh, provides additional information for strain, both strain and she wave elastography. But she wave elastography, in addition, provide true quantitative measurements. Uh, it ha it's helpful to characterize abnormal areas, to detect stiffer areas and biopsies. And the future perspective is, as you can see here, the combination of MR and uh, she wave elastography transrectal fusion, where you can see uh, precisely where are the stiffer areas combined with the information coming from the uh, MR uh, system. So uh, transrectal ultrasound elastography can be used, and this is the key uh, recommendation to identify a suspicious target regions for biopsy in order to increase the positive uh, detection rate of prostate cancer. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, um, Professor Corres. So I think for the moment there are no questions from the audience, but uh, if there will be some until the end of the, um, the webinar, um, I will ask you for, for no, no questions. Problems. So thank you very much one more time. Oh, just wait a bit because we have, uh, I think we have some questions. There's one which ask if there are any studies correlating MR with the shear wave elastography for the prostate specifically. Yes, sure. Uh, there are many studies uh, uh, using uh, MRI uh, for a correlation, but the key point is that MRI is uh, not 100% uh, uh, sensitive and specific. So uh, right now, MR is mostly used for a guiding biopsy or improving identification of abnormal areas, but clearly uh, we 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 did some 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 research in that sense, and we showed that the performance of a she wave elastography is comparable to uh, MR imaging for identification of prostate cancer. Okay, and the other one is uh, if shear wave elastography or strain elastography can detect uh, echo negative lesions. Yes, uh, that's why this technique is, is interesting and that's why um, there's so much improvement in between the conventional B mode and color Doppler transrectal ultrasound imaging of the prostate and the uh, uh, she wave elastography or strain elastography. So basically you can expect to detect at least two, twice or th even three times more prostate cancer compared to conventional B mode. And you see that the sensitivity of a, of a conventional ultrasound is really poor in between 30 to uh, 40%. So I mean, you're missing at least uh, uh, two cancers when you detect one. Okay, thank you very much, Professor Correas. I think there are no more, no more questions.